So there was a mild-mannered man, and he had spent his entire married life being bullied by his wife. She bossed him around, she always told him what to do, kept him under her thumb, and it really destroyed his self-esteem, and so he went to the psychiatrist, and he said, what do I need to do about this? So the psychiatrist said, in order to help build up your esteem, I'm going to work with, on some exercises with you, and I'm going to give you this book on assertiveness. So the man read the book on assertiveness, and then he set out to put it into action. So he stormed into the house one day, and he went up to his wife, and he put his finger right in her face. And he said, from now on, I'm the man of the house, and my word is the law. And every day, you're going to make me a gourmet dinner, and you're going to follow it up with a sumptuous dessert. And then you're going to draw my bath. And when I'm finished, guess who's going to dress me and comb my hair? And his wife looked at him and said, funeral director? <laughs> This is the fourth week of the Toy Box Leadership Series. Lessons on Christian leadership as learned from the toys that we had when we were kids. First week we talked about the slinky dog and we looked at it in relation to vision. The second week we looked at little green army men and we talked about strategy. Last week we looked at Legos and we talked about relationships. Today we're going to look at Mr. Potato Head. Mr. Potato Head. And we're going to talk about communication. Communication is an interesting thing. It's complicated. There was a pastor who had a standard liturgy for his funerals. Kept them in his computer. And the only way he would personalize them was he would go and use the find and replace mode in his computer. And he would find the name he had used last time and replace it with the name he was using this time. Well, that worked out great. He was doing a funeral and everything was going smoothly until they got to the Apostles' Creed, which he had printed in the bulletin and the congregation that was gathered for the funeral was reading it. And they, they read, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Edna. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Potato Head was the brainchild of a guy named George Lerner. In the early 40s, he created them, and the original design was plastic facial features to be stuck on a real potato. Now, I was not born in the early 40s, but the first Mr. Potato Head I had was just that. It was the features, and we would go get a potato out of the garage, and we would play Mr. Potato Head that way. So I remember that. The parts originally came in boxes of cereal. But then he sold the rights to guys named Henry and Merrill Hassenfeld. Henry and Merrill Hassenfeld, who were doing business as the Hassenfeld brothers. Later on, they shortened that name to Hasbro. Hasbro. That's right, to Hasbro. And in 1952, Mr. Potato Head became the first toy ever advertised on national network television. The first year that they did that, it sold $4.1 million worth of Mr. Potato Head pieces. In 1953, they added Mrs. Potato Head. Followed closely thereafter by what they call Brother Spud and Sister Yam. I don't remember them. And in the late 50s, Hasbro went to the plastic body that we know now, and the rest is history. Communication. One of the most important skills is how to communicate effectively. I read a story about Socrates, and he had a young man who came to him and asked him if he would teach him the gift of speaking. And he asked that question, and then before Socrates could say a word, the man followed with an incessant stream of words. Just wouldn't stop talking to the point that Socrates finally put his hand over the young man's mouth to make him stop talking. And he said, I'll do it, but I have to charge you a double fee. And the young man said, why a double fee? And he said, I have to teach you two sciences, how to hold your tongue and how to use it. And those are both keys to communication. Because poor communication, I'm convinced, is one of the chief causes of many of the problems that we have in the world. So I'll ask the question I ask every week. What does the Bible have to say about this? And I'll give you the same answer I give every week, which is the Bible has a lot to say about this. But I want to share two really short passages from the book of Proverbs. Even different chapters from the book of Proverbs. But these two short sentences say an awful lot about communication. The first one comes from Proverbs 12, 18. 
And it says, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And then we jump to Proverbs 15, 2, which picks up with the tongue of the wise. And it says, the tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of a fool gushes folly. So I want to share with you some, some uh, examples of poor communication. There was a sign on the door of a repair shop, and it said in big letters, we repair anything. And then in parentheses underneath it, it said, please knock hard, the doorbell is broken. <laughs> I read that when Gerber first started selling baby food in Africa, they used the same packaging that they used in America, the cute little baby on the label. And nobody bought baby food from them. And it wasn't until later that they found out that African companies routinely put pictures on the label of what's inside the jar. I learned that when Pepsi started marketing their product in China, they came up with the slogan, Pepsi brings you back to life. But when it translated into China, what the Chinese read was, Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave. <laughs> And I've always heard the story about why Chevrolet could not sell the, the Nova in Spanish-speaking countries. It just wouldn't sell. And somebody finally told them that in Spanish, Nova means won't go. <laughs> Literally, it means don't go. But I also read that sometimes communications, miscommunications, can be downright dangerous. I read about an ad that was seen in the newspaper. This one I liked. It said, the ad said, and I quote, in our book called Skydiving Made Easy, please make the following correction. On page 12, cross out the words enter zip code and write in the words pull ripcord. <laughs> we apologize for any inconvenience. No matter what you do, communication is important. And there are two key steps to good communication. The first step is to listen. Listen to some, when someone is talking to you. You listen to other people. Tom and Betty had a great relationship. He was a communications major in college, and she majored in drama. So he communicated well, and she acted like she was listening. You've got to be a mirror, and you have to reflect back what the person is saying. Ask questions for clarification, but don't interrupt. I don't know about you, but my mom was a big one. You do not interrupt. It's rude to interrupt. And I'm shocked at how many people I talk to who jump right in and interrupt in the middle of a sentence. You listen, you ask questions for clarification, but you don't interrupt. Now, not only do you listen to other people, but the key to this listening is listening to God. Find out what God is telling you. Listen for the still, small voice that whispers in your ear. And if you really tune into that, you will, I'm convinced, hear it. When you hear it, respond to it. That's the key. Or to quote that great theologian, Lady Macbeth, screw your courage to the sticking place and follow God's lead. Because it takes courage to follow God's lead. 